Mr. Eddie told me to come collect what's his. Who the fuck is that? It's my boss. I'm working there. Stand by. Camera speed. Action! All right, guys, we're talking about the unconventional draw. Obviously, we're in a movie theater. And it's a very likely place to be able to be in a situation where you might have to draw your gun. And we've all been in a movie theater and thought to ourselves, what action would we take if somebody walked into that movie theater right now? Like we always talk about, everything we do needs context, whether it's in training or reality. You go to a range and you shoot on a static environment at a 90 degree angle from the target. You draw your gun and shoot, and that's the A plus answer. But that's not what reality is. And chances are, if a threat does pop up, the environment is gonna be extremely dynamic and you're probably gonna find yourself in a position that you didn't expect to be in. That's why we make ourselves uncomfortable in training in order to recognize these things and adapt to our environment. There's three things that we wanna take away from this scenario while we break this down. Unorthodox positioning, blending in, and finding concealment. The first one of unorthodox positioning is getting into positions that we didn't expect to be in that are gonna be uncomfortable. In this situation in the theater, I was having to orient towards a threat, identify it, and draw all while trying to move my feet in about a two feet space in front of me with other seats around. The second thing is blending in, and especially if we conceal carry, we do not want to draw unnecessary attention to ourselves if we have to be the good guy in that situation and deploy a firearm. You don't want to be standing there all stoic like a superhero and drawing attention to yourself. In order to do that, we need to blend in with what the environment is doing, with what the people are doing around us. If everybody's reacting or acting in a certain way, we need to be a part of that blending process as we're continually taking in our environment and applying as much situational awareness as possible. Just because everyone's jumping on the floor doesn't mean I'm gonna take my eye off what the threat's doing. I can still move to a different level below the chair and still keep my eye on what the threat's doing. Blending in is a huge part of concealment, and that's our third thing. You're concealing yourself in that environment to not draw attention to you. There's no reason that I can't conceal myself behind one of those chairs or whatever my environment is giving us in order to get the firearm out online and do it effectively. So while I'm blending in and finding concealment, I'm still taking in what's going on in my environment and putting myself in the best position possible. That way I'm exposing myself as little as possible using the concealment of the back of the seats to my advantage. That way, instead of seeing this big profile of a guy drawing a gun on you, all you see is a sliver of a head that you're probably not even gonna be looking at because you're looking at bigger targets. You're looking at big flashy movements. All these three things wrapped up together gives us an advantage in the fight if we were to need them. Yeah. All right, stand by. That's two seconds. And action. Sending. When facing away from a threat that's actively shooting in this scenario, the priority is to orient towards the threat to gain awareness, identify the location, and take action if necessary. The first step is to rotate my body as quick as possible by positioning my right foot to prep my legs to turn. Once my feet start moving, I can begin to rotate my body. I start my draw with one hand until my lead hand rotates enough to assist clearing my shirt material out of the way. Once clear, I establish a three-finger grip and start my draw. The second my pistol clears the holster, I drop my elbow and immediately bring my gun up in my focal plane meeting it at center chest to establish a two-handed grip. Once I establish my stable shooting platform, I simultaneously keep a low profile to stay concealed while leaning to find a good lane to take a shot through. Target ID is critical with a large crowd in a confined space. All right, guys, wrapping it up with the debrief for unconventional draw. The three things that we went over is unorthodox positioning, blending in, and concealment. What's important to understand, 
how this unconventional draw plays into a lot of different environments, not just the theater. I've only got a certain amount of space to work with here, and with all those dynamics coming together of me having to turn around, get good footwork in, thread ID, keep myself low profile, use concealment to my advantage, and take accurate shots, there's a lot going on. We have to make ourselves uncomfortable in our training. We have to apply it in our training to make ourselves more capable. Find uncomfortable positions to be in and add it to your training. That's gonna help you in reality if you do need to take an unconventional stance. Use the visualization, use it to your training programs and find these opportunities to create good repetition. All right guys, that's the full debrief. Take these points away, apply them to your training program. Keep training hard and we'll see you guys the next time we break down the next move.